Ooh, that looks tasty. Welcome folks, Stay the Hungry Gamer is back with another game review, and today we are talking about Backwoods, designed by Ryan Williams. Now, what Backwoods is, is it is a solo or co-op game of survival, and in this game you are playing the remaining members of an expedition in 1800s Colorado, your canoe flipped and you find yourself stranded, kind of out in the wilderness and trying to survive, though you do start at the cabin there. And mostly it's a game of resource management as you'll be managing your stats over here and you'll be foraging as you're moving around in order to craft items. All in all, so you can complete two of the four objectives in the game. And there are several scenarios that you can play with. Now, if you are not interested in how this game is played and just want to jump into my final thoughts, then you want to go to the timestamp on the screen right now. For those of us still here, let's talk about how this game works. The first thing that's gonna happen is you will select one of all of these pioneers. And as you can see, there are a bunch of different options here. As I just kind of flip through, and you'll see there are men, women, and multiple different races represented as well. And then after you've each player, and after each player selects one of those, you will select from a variety of different traits. And all of these traits are various abilities that you have. And again, all of them are obviously significantly different. I'm not going to go through all of them, but you get an idea here. And again, there are a whole mess of them. And when you get those together, that's going to determine not only your ability, but your starting statistics. Because when you start the game, you have your four stats down here, which are vitality, survival, fitness, and combat. And depending on which character you are, you will start with a slight bonus. And then depending on how many players you are playing with, you will get to get more bonuses as you start out. And what's important here is each of these represent the bonus you get to add to all dice rolls. All checks you're going to make in the game are going to use a 10-sided die. And then depending on what kind of check it is, you'll get to add whatever your stat is. So in this case, for a fitness check, I'd get to add three to my roll. And that matters because any check in this game is determined by a die roll and you need an eight, nine, or 10 in order to succeed. Now there are ways to add to that. You can spend your insight as you get that, which is your experience. And you're gonna get this insight by completing different events. I'll talk about that in just a minute. But all in all, you get the idea on how that's going to work. Now, what you also see on this board here is you see your opportunity. And again, I will tell you when you get opportunity, but opportunity is what you're going to be using during the foraging phase of the game. And you're going to either be using opportunity to put new things into the bag, and that will again make sense later on, go spend it to draw out of the bag, or you will spend it to raise your faith. And you raise your faith by either spending a little bit of opportunity to just recite a prayer or more opportunity to read some scripture. And over, here, and over here, you see your hypothermia level. And depending on how high it is, that's, that's how much health you lose overnight. And that's how this board is going to work. And then every time you gain four insight, you reset to zero and you're able to raise one of your stats by one. Now let's talk about the phases of the game. So you're gonna start out on the explore. And depending on how high up you are on the on the fitness track, will determine how many different explore actions you have. You start with one, but if you get all the way up to here, you will have two. And when you do an explore action, you're gonna to get to roll the die. And again, you're looking for an eight, nine, or 10. So there I have a seven, but assuming I had a bonus on my survival, I would have succeeded. Then I have a choice. I can either take one of these tokens, which is gonna be used to which will be used as a bonus later on, will protect me from wasps and mosquitoes, or look at an event card, or be, and or use in other ways as you play, or it will allow me to draw the top card of the region deck, flip it over, and put it out knowing what it is. 
And so in this case, I know if I go here, it's mountainous terrain, which means it'll cost me a water. And if I don't have any water, it's going to hurt me. Or it'll let me know that it is treacherous, meaning I have to do a fitness test or I'll take one damage. And you'll see there's different types of symbols down there. I could come down here, and if I wound up there, I would get a water, and I could pick up some bone out of a cave. And again, over here, it's mountainous, and there's bones to find. But wherever it is that you wind up, what's going to happen is you will then move to the forage phase. And I talked about the forage phase. You're using your opportunity to either put things into the bag or draw out of the bag. And here's the bag. And as you'll see, over here, there's all these different resources. Now, some of them you can't put into the bag. You can't ever put food, bone, or fur into the bag. You're going to get that by killing things and fighting things. But all these other things, you're able to just place into the bag by spending your opportunity. And then when you draw things out of the bag, you will see what you get. And so here I drew two things out. And lucky me, I drew two wasps, which would mean I would become poison, which means until I get rid of that, I cannot heal really, really bad. But once you've drawn these, they go out of the game. There's only three of these and three mosquitoes in the bag to start the game. Or I could use one of these tokens that I mentioned earlier to nullify drawing one of these as I go. And the point of this is, is I'm trying to get the equipment that I need in order to craft items when I get to that phase. Now, there is a huge stack of items that you have here, and all of them tell you exactly what they do, and they tell you what it is that you need to craft them and how you're going to use them. And we're going to be using those mostly when we come to the event battle phase. And what's going to happen on that phase is you'll draw a card off the event deck. You have your story, and usually you have a choice of two things. Down here tells you how much insight you're going to get or experience for completing it. So you make your choice, you flip it over, and you go through, you read your result. Sometimes just something happens, you have to make a test, maybe you get something. Sometimes it winds up being a battle. If it winds up being a battle, you're going to use your combat stat. And you'll be facing some kind of animal, which will always, which will wind up attacking you first. And depending on how many players you're playing with, it determines how much health it has. And you'll be hitting it back using your weapons and your combat stat. Down here, it tells you what you're going to get for killing it. And there will always be some kind of ability that it has. Now, in general, what's important is when you do combat, the animal attacks you once, then runs away. So either you kill it on your first counter strike or that's the end of combat. Some of them, these possessed things, some of them, like these, these possessed wolves, will wind up fighting you over and over and over again until one of you is dead. Then you have to give each of your survivors one food and one water, and again, if you can't, you're going to lose two health for each one. Then you move into the night phase, and in the night phase, you're going to draw one of these mini night cards, and each of them has something on the back, and it tells you exactly what's going to happen. Sometimes you might have something that protects you. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes it might be good. Sometimes it's going to be bad. In fact, usually it's going to be bad. And then there you go. You come back around, and you're back into the next day, and you're going to do the same thing again. Now, you're going to be exploring, moving around and around until eventually you'll find the fort. And then at the fort, you'll be able to accomplish most of these objectives. So you can drop off three fur there. You can drop off two medicinal herbs there. Do both of those. Good for you. You've won the game. This one over here has to do with trading with natives, which you can find as you're going through. As you're going through the different regions, eventually you might find one that has natives there that you can trade with. Or by fully exploring seven regions. Every time you've gone through an entire region, had an event there, you'll wind up placing one of these tokens out, which means you fully explored the region and you can no longer forage there, though events still will happen. But there you have it. That's it. That's how this game works. So what do I like about this game? First thing is I have been kind of looking for a game like this for a while. And the reason I say that is because it reminds me of Unbroken. Yes, that Unbroken. The Unbroken with a lovely, nice designer and the worst publisher in the history of board games. Yes, the publisher that threatened to sue me because I said some negative things in my review of my personal backed copy of the game. So, needless to say, I didn't hold on to that. Not because the game wasn't good. It was. It was you know, a really solid resource management adventure style game. And I actually enjoyed it, but I had to let it go. Too many bad feelings. And I'm, not, I'm kind of weird like that. But here comes this game. 
And this game does a lot of the same things because at its core, it is a resource management game, but it's a slightly more complicated than Unbroken was because not only are you gathering resources as you go, but you have this bag management, this bag curating mechanic added to it, which I really like. I really like that you get to the point of the game where you are using your opportunity and you're gonna use that to put the things in the bag that you know you need and then draw things out. So there still is that randomness that fits thematically as you're kind of wandering around this area trying to find stuff. You might not find what you need, but you find, well, what you get. And I do like that, but you're able to start, start stacking the deck. And that I really do think is possibly the best part of this game, the way that works. The second thing that I really enjoy is the leveling up system. It's very simple. You're just adding another just moving your cube up one spot every time you get four insight. But I like that you can take that insight and you can just spend it to potentially mitigate a bad dice roll or to mitigate a dice roll that maybe you don't have a big bonus on. Or you can save it and then up those stats. And all of those stats have, in addition to making your dice rolls better, have some other kind of bonus that goes with them, making each one of those four tracks really, really attractive. And that's made even better when you're playing with more than one different character because then you get to kind of start synergizing. I think that's also extremely clever. So I do, I like all of that. I also like the crafting system a lot because it's simple, but because the resources are so tight in this game, you are constantly making choices. Yes, I could make this spear right now, or yes, I could make this trap right now, but if I do that, it means I can't make a campfire tonight. If I don't make a campfire tonight, then my hypothermia level is going to go up, which means I'm going to be taking more damage overnight. So it's just constantly this trade-off that you're making, and I think that is great in a survival style game. The next thing that I really like is the character creation. You have these different characters, and there's a significant amount of characters. I think it's about eight, ten, something like that, but a goodly, but a goodly amount of them that all do something different. And I like that. I also like that they have done a very good job at inclusivity and with both gender and race. I think they've really made the effort there, and I think that shows. And then along with that, I like that there's all these different traits that you can then give to each of these to have a, not an unlimited combination of different characters you can have, but a huge variety of characters. And because of the way the traits work and the character abilities work, it's going to influence how you build the character depending on the combination. I think that is wonderful. And then the last thing that I particularly like is just the general flow of the round. You know what's coming, you know when there's going to be events, and when these events come, they're going to have this often this kind of choose your own adventure style thing. And even that can be mitigated if you've done a good job with your exploration. So you, you might be able to flip them over and see what both of the options are and so on and so on. And I think that's very, very clever, but mostly I like that there's always that kind of, I'm lost in the wilderness, I don't know what's going to happen. In my time playing, I never was like, oh, well, these are almost always bad. I really didn't know. Sometimes it was bad, sometimes it was good, sometimes it was neutral, sometimes it would lead to a fight, sometimes it wouldn't. And at the same time, because food is so scarce, sometimes you're really hoping you get ambushed. Maybe you can kill the thing, maybe you have something to eat. And I think that works really, really well. So what are my quibbles with the game? And the first quibble that I have is the rule book. It's a mess. It just is. It, it's really, really hard to learn how to play the game from the rule book. Now, that said, I know that a designer is working on a new revamped rule book that's being made available as a PDF, but you have to download it, you have to print that, whatever, so that is a thing. And there's also a how to play video or playthrough video that the designer has made, which I found very, very, very useful. It actually is very clear, and you can learn how to play the game pretty darn quickly because it's actually not that hard of a game once you know what you're doing. The next thing I have to say is the game can feel very, very swingy, and it is very, very hard at the beginning of the game. And what I mean by that is it's possible early on that you just get slammed by the randomness because the mitigation factors that you get come later in the game. As you survive out there longer, you get better abilities, you get ways to mitigate these different events that might be coming. For example, the night cards come out, maybe your faith is high enough and you just ignore it, but it's not gonna start that high. And so at the beginning of the game, you can get smashed and that can feel frustrating. I think of the first two games that I played, I didn't make it four 
rounds before I'd lost. I think in one of them, I may have even lost in the first round in one of them. I may be misremembering, maybe that's not possible, but if it wasn't the first round, it was the second round. And it is possible for that to happen, and that can be exceedingly frustrating if you don't know that is coming. And then the only other quibble that I'll say is one that may bother you, it may not bother you, or you might be thrilled by it, but it's just something that I want to point out. I don't point it out as necessarily a bad thing or a good thing, but it's something to know about. There is a lot of importance placed on faith in this game, and in this game that is Christianity specifically. Some of the item cards have verses from the Bible on there, and it is that faith, reading scripture and prayer and things like that, that you're using to build your, your faith to protect you from some of the demons and so on that, that's out there. And that's fine. However, there is a native character in the game, and there is, I believe it's a Chinese character in the game. And I feel like that is a missed opportunity to explore some of those faiths as well. Or take a step back and just make it generic faith. And so whatever religion or beliefs you believe that the character you're playing has, that can be supported. Now, is it overt and in your face and this is the way? No, not at all. But I didn't notice it. And if I noticed it, you might as well. And I mostly only noticed it when I was playing some of the characters like, would they have been that faith? I don't think so. I mean, maybe. But it made me think about it. So just something to know that it is there may not bother you, it may bother you, who knows? Just something to be aware of. So there you have it, folks. That is Backwoods. Overall, I like this game. I think it does the survival genre well. I really like the way you're curating your bag. I like the challenge to it. I'd love to see some more different scenarios, maybe some more cards, more event cards, because I suspect eventually I'm going to start recognizing some of the event cards and I'll be saying, oh, well, no, I know what's happening here, you know, those kinds of things. But overall, for a small indie designer, I think this is a very cool game. And if you like that kind of game, it is absolutely worth checking out, particularly the deluxe edition, because the player boards and everything are pretty darn nice. As always, if I've made any mistakes in the rules overview, please let me know in the comments with a timestamp and I'll get that into the Klingon subtitles. As always, if you found this video useful, please like, subscribe, and share. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.